All right, let's bring in the aforementioned Stephen Moore, Heritage Foundation Distinguished Visiting Fellow. Stephen, welcome back to the show. It's good to see a man like you. Hi, Stuart. Okay, am I right here? Socialism appears to be popular in that poll, but when you dig into it, real socialism is not that popular. Well, there's a lot of data in that poll. By the way, what was the number you, you, that uh, people who want uh, the government to control the economy? I think you said it was about 30. It's 33 percent. Yes. Yeah. So that you know, that's, that's even a big that's number. Dis yeah. even that's disturbing to me. One th one out of three Americans want the government to control our economy. Um, now, the, then the question is, why is there this kind of infatuation with socialism? You know, when, when I was friends with Milton Friedman. Uh, up until the day, day he died. And I remember he used to say to me, Steve, you know, the, the most important lesson of the 20th century, and I think he was right about this, is that free market capitalism is generally a success and socialism, communism, these other isms are a failure. And he used to, he used to lament that for some reason, even though we know that's true, people say they want a little bit more socialism. And I think that's what's coming through in this poll. And I would say the thing that disturbs me the most about this, Stuart, is um, it is an incredible indictment of our education system in America, that we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to educate kids from the time they're four years old to the time they're sure. 22 years old, yeah. and they're coming out with these you know, dim-witted dim ideas about socialism. And, and look, as, if you're a cons free market conservative like I am, and I think you are, we have ourselves to blame. We let the left run the schools, and this is That's what they're true. teaching the kids. That is absolutely true. You're right there, Stephen. Now, uh, Atlanta's Fed president says he doesn't expect a rate cut this year. What do you think? Do you think we should cut rates this year? And if so, why? I do. I think we should, we should uh, cut by a quarter percentage point, which would reverse the catastrophically bad uh, rate increase that happened in December. Uh, remember, I, I think it was on this show when the, when, the, when the Fed raised those rates, I said it's crazy, this is an act of economic malpractice. And remember uh, in early January, the Fed had to reverse course and say we're not going to raise rates uh, throughout 2019. Now that was a start, but I would, I would reverse the thing. Now I want to tie this, by the way, if I may, Stuart, because mm -hmm. I'm writing a column on this right now, so I'm going to give you a sneak preview of this. Look at what's happened to commodity prices, especially agriculture prices, over the last year. They've fallen, I just looked at the numbers, they've fallen by an average of a little, almost 10 percent. Now, think about the problems that farmers are facing. Everybody's saying, oh, it's because of the China trade situation, our farmers are struggling, and, and there's no question the trade war uh, and the fact that the Chinese are going to buy less of our soybeans and wheat and cotton, that does hurt our farmers. But I would make the case to you, Stuart, and I want your reaction to this, the big villain here has been the Fed. They are too tight. They're causing a deflation, especially in commodity prices, that's killing our farmers. And if the Fed were to raise rates, put some more um, money liquidity into the economy, our farmers would be doing a lot better. I'm going to say the Fed is the bigger villain here than the Chinese trade war. I, I'm not going to get into a fight with you. Because, okay. no, 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 it wouldn't be a fight. It would be a one-sided yeah. discussion because you know a lot more about this than I do, and that's a fact. But I do want to ask you a bit more about trade. Yeah. If this trade fight drags on for a long time, and I'm talking months and months, do you think that the business will continue to give political support to the president? You mean the, the business groups? The business community, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't see them, them giving him support right now. I mean, what, groups, what business groups are supporting Trump on this? And by the way, you know, I'm kind of agnostic on this. I mean, I, th I think Trump is fighting a good fight here. I mean, I think the Chinese are... Their behavior is outrageous. Their trade practices are outrageous. I think Trump is exactly right to call them out on this. I'm not so sure the tariff is, is necessarily the right way to do it. But, yeah, I mean, I, you may make a good point. If this continues to roll on, and I think I said on your show a week or two ago, I expect that, that before the end of this year, I think there's a high likelihood there will be a deal. I don't think mm -hmm. it's going to be a great deal. I think, you know, China will make some minor concessions. Uh, but once that happens, I think the economy goes back on its merry way and, and we've got a strong 2020. If that doesn't happen, though, if this trade fight continues to, to go on, you know, past the end of this year, I think it could depress the economic growth by a half a percentage point or so, and that's a lot. And that's not I mean, good. That, yeah, that's, that's a big good. number. I, I can't resist going back to the Fed for just one shining moment. <laughs> okay. Um, I know you'll set me straight on this. If we, if the Fed did cut rates now, yeah, you think we'd get four percent growth in the third or fourth quarters of this year? 
Well, the trade the trade war is a problem, you know. So I think there's two problems right now in terms of the economy. You, if, if the Fed were to lower rates and just get rid of this idea that it's going to raise rates, I think that would be a very positive thing. And second of all, if we solve the trade crisis and we get some kind of deal with China, then yeah, look, go back to the summer of 2018 before the Fed started raising rates and before we had this trade war. We did get to 3.5% to 4% growth. Remember that story? And yep. there was no inflation. That's yep. my complaint about the Fed. Why, are the, why were they raising rates when there was no hint of inflation? They say, oh, well, we had to normalize interest rates. I don't even know what that means. I, don't, I have no idea what they're talking about, raising uh, hmm. rates to normalize interest rates. We're in a whole new environment right now. But yes, the answer is, because remember, you can look it up on your tape, Stuart. I mean, remember three years ago on the show, I said 4% growth for five years if we get these policies in place, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, good man. Stephen Moore, don't be such a stranger. Come and see us again real soon, okay? Okay, Stuart. <laughs> see you soon. Thanks.